uh, I'm John Sardinia, I work uh, at Unbubble, I'm a front-end developer and um, currently I'm responsible for a web application and uh, what I'm going to tell you is how we moved from uh, an Angular JS application, a very old, uh, 1.2 I think, uh, into a more modern structure using <coughs> Vue.js. So when you, when, you're, when you start a project from scratch, you can decide whatever technology you want to use, how you're going to structure it, uh, and then you plan the features and you just develop with no, you don't have to focus about any legacy code or whatnot. Uh, but that's very different when you are working on a product uh, or on an application that belongs to a product. Um, you have features, you have uh, a release schedule, and uh, if, you, if, you, if the application you are working on, you may have inherited from a previous developer or you're just working on a team, uh, if you don't really like the way how it's structured or if you think it's not going to scale well, a common thing is you think, oh, I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm just going to do it in this new way that is amazing and it's going to scale well. And yeah, the future will be great. But that's not exactly possible because you can just stop well, developing the features, uh, evolving the product. You can just stop for three months to rebuild it in the way you think it's, it's best for the product. And, not, and especially not if you are a one-person one team, uh, which is my case. So you have to find a strategy to, to, to actually keep, keep the current application working um, uh, because it's, it's, it, was, it was working well. Uh, but prepare it to, to, to scale um, in the future and to add every feature you may need and also to, to be more up, the, up to date because uh, Angular 1.2 is really old and things, it, it's just not working re uh, very nice to, to develop. So, yeah, what I'm, what I'm going to talk about is that. So, we, this application, um, it's, it was built using Angular, and it, uh, it was a confusing mix of Angular and, J and jQuery. So, you could have uh, Angular components, but then you had jQuery doing things that the Angular component should be doing. So yeah, the thing was, is, is working well, but it's not actually how it's supposed to be and it will not scale well because it, it will be hard to, to add new features. Um, it was part of a monolithic structure, wh which we call the core. And uh, if you just add more build tools to support like uh, JavaScript transpilation or, or all those tools that you want to use, like a Webpack with live reloading or hot module reloading, uh, you're just going to be adding more stuff to uh, this big monolith. So one of our goals was to to collect all the the assets of this application and move it to a separate project that would be then connected to core. Uh, so that was one of the goals. And uh, the existing code for this specific application within this core, um, it had no tests. It was not built to be testable. And you can think of it like this. So you have the core. This is not the scale, obviously. This, this application is not almost the whole thing. But it was inside this core, and it was running almost independently, so it could be, it could be moved with, a, with a little bit of effort. So um, what we decided to do is uh, all these frameworks are always popping up. So we have the new Angular, which is on version 5 right now. Uh, React is also very popular with the big community. And then um, our VP for engineering, Marcelo, and, and I have heard about uh, Vue.js before, and he really pushed me, and not pushed in the sense of you're going to do this, but he, he said, look, these guys are doing a great job. You should check them out. And you may, you may like it or just decide what, what you want to do. And so I did. I did check out um, the Vue.js. And I really liked it. The documentation was simple. They had just released uh, version 2.0, which was really nice. And that had a lot of improvements. And um, so back to the initial point where you want to move from an old application into a new one, and you can simply rewrite everything. One, one thing I really liked, uh, similar to how Angular 1 works, worked, um, is that you can <coughs> simply include Vue.js on the page. And you can just start creating a component. And uh, it's easy to grow into a complex application with a build system. So I really like that. And uh, so I did. I did, we, we did start using Vue.js. Um, because it, it, it really pr uh, it showed us that it was, able, it was possible to scale it. So that's what we needed right, right at the time. So basically, the first thing I did with, um, with Vue.js was I actually built it in CodePen. I don't know if you, if you know CodePen, but 
you basically have like this environment with uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And I just built my new component that I would be integrating into the interface. I built it in CodePen, and I just copy pasted into the templates, and it was it's just worked. So I didn't need any complex setup system. I and, and it was working very well, and it was already uh, using the concept of the components. So it was really easy to integrate, and I was able to deliver the features that I needed right at the time, but also keeping in mind what, what I wanted to be in the future. So overall, our goals was to link the new components with the old application, because we decided that um, we would be keeping the existing application working, and we would maintain it as, as needed. But then we wanted to create like this new folder with all the new code base that would be would be incrementally um, adding new components as as we would be rewriting them or creating them from scratch. So you, you at at a certain point you had you'd have two code bases in the same project. Um, we had to prepare like to, we wanted we we had to think of what we wanted to do in the future. For example, I wanted like reloading because that, that's super useful while developing how to module reloading so you don't lose the states when you're updating your JavaScript app. Uh, we wanted to add um, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment. And we wanted tests also because you, you have to know that a project is healthy and sometimes it's hard to check everything when you, when you are testing. So, uh, and the, the end goal was to uh, completely remove Angular from, from our, our application because it was, wouldn't be necessary. So, as I was saying, um, when we created this new component, one of the challenges was how to talk with the, the existing application in Angular. And um, basically, this means the main application is doing its thing, and it provides data to this other component, because at the time, this, this, this sidebar, it was just displaying uh, information related to the main application. So you could just push content from the main application to the sidebar and just display it, no, no complex um, no complex inter interactions was needed. And so the simplest thing, because we were already using jQuery, and the simplest thing was just to emit some events and then just catch them on the other side. No fancy, no fancy stuff here, just really simple stuff that will allow us to, to keep moving fast. Um, yeah, the sidebar catches the data, the, the events, and updates the data. You can think of it this way, so the main application triggers um, an event, we catch it on the other side, we collect the data, and then we can push it to the local context of the sidebar. Uh, it, it's basically this, so you, this function is the handler on the side of the sidebar, and just catches the data and updates. And because Vue is also, uh, the UI is reactive, when you update the data, everything else just uh, happens like uh, in, in React or in Angular, for example. Um, so another thing you can do is, this, this is like, um, like just think of two boxes; they are just communicating. But then there is you may also have the need to um, to create like within your Angular application you want to do some new things while you still cannot rewrite the whole thing. You want to add small view components. You can also do that. Excuse me. So when you're do in your Angular code, there are certain points where you want to insert a, a new component. You can just create a mounting point like a, a div. You place that mounting point in the right, the place where you want your component to appear, and then you just need to create your component and mount it to the mounting point. So you first you create like the container of where that, that is going to be placed, and then you just create a component and render it in that place. And then you get all the benefits of Vue because it, this will be connected to your existing Vue code base. So any anything that you are doing there, it, in your tooling and everything, it, it will just work. So just don't forget to destroy in case you have some event listeners. You don't want to have troubles in there. We actually didn't have, but it's always good to, to mention it. So the part of creating the new components and linking them to, to the existing code base, that is done. So then we get to the part I was talking about, the tools and what we want for the future. So uh, over time, this application became independent. as It moved from the, the core to its own project. Um, so then we can uh, add all of these tools because we're not messing in, in someone's, someone else's work. We can have our deployment process and everything. So the, the old application uh, remains untouched, the existing application in Angular. We don't, we don't need to touch it only for maintenance. And we are constant, constantly improving our 
new code base and adding new components. Um, we, we had uh, another var on, the, on this application. It was also a view component and it was talking to, to the sidebar with, uh, with the data store like, uh, like uh, React has. Um, and uh, it was just another folder with all our important things. The main JS would be the main file where everything was put together. Uh, and we had uh, some tests. We started with unit testing. Right now we are only doing unit tests. I'm going to talk about more. I'm going to talk about that uh, a little in, um, further in the presen presentation. Um, yeah, and we have some configs and whatnot. So what what did we want to to prepare this application for the ideal developing scenario? Uh, Vue has a really cool thing, which is the single file components. It's just like um, I don't know much about React. So I'm, I'm not going to give some uh, link any examples, but this is like a file where you can have your your component all specified, where you have the logic of the component, the presentation, and the styling. You can all have all of that in the component, and it's really easy to transport it or share it um, in to other projects. So we wanted to do that to have that. Um, it was very easy to migrate the components that we had created using the like the simplest setup possible. It was very easy to to migrate them to view files. So we basically just move them from one place to another, and include them in the main in main file, and it was just working. Sorry, um, um, uh, view has something similar to create React app, uh, and I link it link it here if you are interested in view. Definitely check this out after maybe the initial guide. It has a really good uh, setup, so you can start um, working with the view and view, view single file components. I personally do like it a lot, and uh, see if you like it yourself. So this this um, this template had like all the things that I really wanted, like the live reload and hot module reloading. So I just shamelessly copied the the configs and included it into our code base with the the required um, adjustments. But it's working fine. It's working very well, actually. Uh, we also wanted to have the um, to be able to use uh, ES6 code. So yeah, our un our Webpack setup had like uh, Babel and everything, so we could do like the best uh, stuff possible. Um, and uh, if you are sharing uh, resources between your new um, application and the old one it's best to import them in the new application and then expose them back to the window. So b because we were still using jQuery to share, s share the data, uh, we included the jQuery into the new, the new code base and then just um, exposed it to the window. And the old application, f it, it was just like uh, regular. Uh, it was working as normal. So no, no issues there. Um, <coughs> so yeah. So the preparing of the, what we wanted for the future is done. It's great to develop, really easy to add new features, and um, yeah, it's easy, easy to deploy. We have no issues with that, so that is done. Next comes the unit testing. Um, we actually are using something from Facebook, which is Jest. It's a testing framework. Um, I actually tried uh, a, another setup with Karma and Jasmine. And it's way slower than this. This is just, it's virtually configuration free. If you, you just need to include this, run it, and every file that you have that matches the dot test or dot spec, like uh, file.spec.js, it will just find those files and just run them for you. And then and it will, it will probably work for your most simple projects. And then if you need, you can customize it. So. Uh, we are using um, some aliases to, to reference the root of the, the project. So then we can write at and then my component or whatever in our folder. We can, we can that just transfer, transports really easily to, to Jest. So we, have, we don't need to change the way how we are coding or writing our paths to, um, to write the tests. It's really easy. And uh, it's important to us to have the code coverage. So <laughs> with just one setting, you just get the status of your coverage, and you can know if you are missing some function to be tested, and then you can write the tests to, to actually cover it, to make sure that uh, nothing is missing. Uh, actually, right now, we have about 90%, uh, around 90% coverage on this new code base that we have been moving to. 
Um, and it's it's on, it's honestly really fun to to write tests in Jest because it runs really fast. The API is very good. So if you need um, you need tests, definitely check out Jest. Uh, another thing that is very important is mocking. So if you have a service that connect that uh, makes uh, HTTP requests while you're testing, you may want to fetch a local copy of a JSON then that you then can just compare. Uh, you can just set up a, a mox file. Uh, and then in your mox file, you just say, when um, when API is requested, the file API, you just provide this one. And you have a similar API inside this file. And if it matches the other one, it will simply just work. It's it's very easy. Um, so yeah, it was, as I was saying, any file that imports this one, you will actually get that one. So you don't need to be changing. You don't need to do any special changes to your, your code to um, to make it uh, testable. I mean, you have to write it to be testable, but in terms of the includes and everything, you don't need to touch that. So yeah, the unit testing is done. <coughs> so what's next is to remove uh, Angular completely. And there, we are not, we're not there yet. So we have been doing, um, uh, so th it, it was not time to rebuild the, the, the main app, but we were getting to a point where we will have to do that. So Soon we'll have no Angular codes and everything will be much more modular and scalable. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to that, uh, but but we're not there yet. So yeah, I just want to wrap up. So we we were able to to actually keep the existing code base working and still migrate it to something that where we want it to be in the future. So a lot of more component based. Uh, and it was really easy to with view. Probably if you're using React, you can just skip the initial step and you go straight to a build system. And then probably the, the process will, can be similar or maybe you find a better way. But it, it, I'm sure it's possible. We prepared the tools and the way how we want it to, to work. So it's, it's focused on the developer and everything is very easy. And um, we have unit tests to make sure that the project evolves uh, over time uh, in good health. And we actually plan on having also snapshot testing. That is also possible with the Jest, but we haven't tried it yet. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I can also write, ask, answer questions about CSS. I also like it very much. So feel free if you have some questions. Um, I'm, I'm all ears. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what percentage of uh, the code is already uh, um, Right now, I would uh, migrate it to, yeah. do, to the new thing. Yeah. Uh, right now, I, I would say probably 50%. And we actually, we are working on the rebuilding of the main application. So very soon, within the next two months, it will be fully where we've completed all this all this process. And uh, how long have you started? Because I remember when I saw you for the first time you were trying Vue.js. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I, I've been at Unbubble for about a year. Uh, I didn't take one year to do this, but I was, I was any time I had the chance, I would be working on this new setup and also the, uh, delivering the features that we needed and doing the regular day-to-day -day job. Uh, but yeah, this was a, it was a done in terms of if you had to put together the whole minutes that this was worked on, this was actually very fast because it's not, it's not complicated. Um, but yeah, this was a process that was, was evolving over time, even migrating from the monolith to the, the separate project. It was also in a certain point in time. So yeah, it was just done very smoothly over time. Okay. Uh, I have a note, but it's more for you to check the if you okay, if you can compare the um, just snapshots with the other ones with, with other, other okay. which uh, I think are much more performance. Okay, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I haven't touched that. But I will <laughs> yeah. check, check it out. Yeah, because I just heard about Ava a few weeks ago, and uh, they have also some accessibility stuff. I think uh, some plugins for the browser. Uh, so I was looking into that too. Thanks. Yes. Um, so um, I didn't get it, but is is it a single page app? Uh, what you're working on? Yes, it's a single. And how did you work with a uh, with the router? So are you using Angular router? How do you manage to do? I'm asking because 
uh, at my company, we're currently using Angular and React trying to migrate. And one of the big headaches is uh, how would we do the routing if we would keep the Angular and then switch back just at the last minute, mm -hmm. right? Or if we do a wrapper around it and stuff like that, how did you approach or are you thinking about approaching that problem? Yes, actually we don't have that problem. Ah, okay. This is a single page application, but it doesn't have routes. Uh, but I can tell if Vue.js has the view routes. Okay. Okay. But it also, yeah, Vue.js has the routes, thank you. But, uh, but yeah, that's, not a, that's a problem we don't have, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> yes, I'm very happy. <laughs> yeah, because I have talked to other people about the, all this process that many people probably are doing it. And uh, yeah, the routes is always that last thing, right? And no one really, <laughs> yeah, it's still to be figured out. I guess you just have to prepare everything and just flip the switch. I actually talked to a guy who, who said that he... he re and then it breaks. Yeah, and then it breaks. But uh, this guy I talked to uh, is actually during Web Summit. He, it was that setting. I've heard this from three people already. And the way how they were doing it is they, they actually mimic the, some of the components, like Pixel Perfect. And then when they click the, the, but the thing, it will just move to another page. <laughs> and then things would be moving on that side. So I guess there are many options. Yes. yes. So, um, so we work together, of course. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to maybe for you to mention um, our work regarding the decoupling of the web, web interface from core regarding like the microservice implementation. Maybe it's easy for, it's better for people to understand what was done and how that uh, actually enabled us to, to do it faster. Yeah, uh, so yeah, the way how it works, basically this application was inside core and it just, um, <coughs> it just contacted a few, a few endpoints. So that was really easy to, to separate. But how we did it was, we didn't actually change. I don't know if this is where you want me to go to, but Just yeah. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, we we basically made this so that the the existing URLs and the existing app would would continue working, uh, and it, if a specific case would uh, would be found, then the request would go to this new application instead of the the old application, and so this allowed us to to keep to do the migration really smoothly. And uh, yeah, this was actually no extra effort. Like you, you don't have to do an extra effort while you're developing. You just need to prepare things in the right way. I'm not sure if this is good information, but yeah. Sorry. Do you have more questions? It, it's a very curious evening because the first presentation we we heard that uh, we have to prefer reason ML to Microsoft TypeScript. And now you say we have to prefer Vue.js to Google Angular. I so don't it's very curious. Okay. And now can we mix both ReasonML and uh, uh, Vue.js or can you mix them or do you, how to choose among both? So. Uh, to be honest, I don't. I, I hadn't. I didn't know a, a reason ML before. But my understanding is, reason ML is more like it's, it, they say it's not a new. It's it's not a new language or something. But it's like, I I my guess is you could write reason ML to you could use reason ML to write um, view components, for example. So one thing is for to create your uh, UI components. The other thing is the language that you use to actually build them. So I probably you could mix both very very well together, and I'm not uh, vouching for Angular versus Vue. It just works for us. So <laughs> yeah, it was made, made sense. Thank you. Yes. So, and yes. did you think of uh, using Angular five or so? Uh, to be honest, we d we we just discarded that because yeah. one of the things we want yes. with this is. Uh, <coughs> Like we wanted to not set standards as in everyone at the company has to use them, but we wanted to make sure that we had like a, um, a predefined toolkit that anyone that joins, uh, for example, as an intern can use to develop, uh, like they, they, they join as an intern and they want to develop an interface. If they want, they can use Vue because we already use it and we, we know how to support it internally. And Vue has a really low learning curve it's basically just writing plain JavaScript, and if you want, you can use AS6 to make it, some things uh, easier. Um, 
And for example, with uh, Angular 5, you have to use TypeScript, you have to have the build system. So there are a lot of things that come with it that we really didn't want it. And uh, with React, there was really no, re no special reason. We, we just found that Vue was really nice and we decided to go with it. Okay. So it's very simple to use and easy to scale. And yeah, it's just a good recommendation to use internally. Great, thanks. Yes. Uh, you looked, probably you looked into React also uh, when you were searching. What was like the key factor that? Uh, I'm sorry, with that? What was like the key factor that made you opt for Vue and not React? Or what are the bad things you have to say about React? I I have no, no bad things to say because honestly, I have never built a production pro pro project using React. So I don't have real world experience with it, with it. I only tried with the Create React app and just test it out uh, very simply. So I don't have a strong opinion on that. Uh, the documentation for Vue seemed great. I, I created some examples. It felt it, 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 I felt productive with it. Doesn't mean that it's not the same with React. I mean, it was it, you have to make a choice, right? It, there are so many paths, and you just have to choose one. So that's what we did. On, to be honest, it was just that. No, no hard things about React. Cool. The code, the, the component itself, the Vue.js, is just 34 kilobytes. That's smaller, it. right? It's much, much smaller. Less boilerplate, yeah. Whatever here. Cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Are we done? Uh, I guess. Any other questions? Any questions? Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much.